So the first factor is an encounter with the son of the living God. Number two, knowledge. Number three, what is the third requirement to enjoy this life that you have received in Christ? Faith to appropriate the promises that come with that life. Again, faith to appropriate the promises that come with that life. What is faith? Action. What is faith? Obedience. Faith to appropriate the promises that come with that life. Knowing that you have been given exceeding great and precious promises is not enough. You must have the faith to engage. The faith to obediently engage with the promises, to appropriate the promises that come with that life. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 38. Enjoying eternal life as the just happens by faith. Now the just shall live by faith. And if any man draws back, he says, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. I think he's 39. Let's try 39. If he has something I'm looking for. Yes. He says, but we are not of them who draw back in unto perdition. He says, but of them that believe unto the saving of the soul. Your believing is unto something. Salvation. The journey of the believer and you're excelling. As far as this faith life is concerned, as far as eternal life is concerned, is faith dependent. Many times they cried unto Jesus, increase our faith. And he did not consider their request as unnecessary. The Bible lists for us various levels of faith. You have been taught here. A quick recap. No faith, little faith, great faith, exceeding great faith. These are the four levels of faith. And all of them do not purchase the same dimension of spiritual reality. No faith, little faith, great faith, exceeding great faith. Hallelujah. This is the victory that overcome the world, the Bible says, even our faith. So you need an encounter with Jesus, the son of the living God. Second, you need knowledge, high level spiritual illumination as touching the promises and the benefits that come with this life. Number three, the faith to engage, the faith to appropriate the promises that come with this life you have received. Finally, are you ready? The final factor you must walk in keeping with is that you must understand the warfare dimension of experiencing eternal life. The warfare dimension of experiencing eternal life. The warfare dimension of experiencing eternal life. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 12, please. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this world. Hmm. Against spiritual wickedness in high places. Look up, please. Let me pause for a moment here and pass a very quick comment here. For many people, they believe that the warfare of the believer is just at the realm of the mind. I don't agree. Rulers are not thoughts. Are we together now? Rulers are real spirits with presence and personalities. Are we together? Jesus casted out real spirits from people. He didn't cast out imaginations alone. There were real spirits in people who spoke to him. He spoke back to them, asked them to be silent and casted them away. Are we together now? Angels are a cater of spirits. Demons are a cater of spirits called unclean spirits. There are unclean thoughts. There are unclean imaginations. But there are unclean personalities who have life called spirits. If your only understanding of warfare ends in the realm of the mind, you will not do justice to your victory. There are thoughts, yes, are in the realm of the mind. Imaginations sponsored by spirits. Yes. But there are real personalities that are sent to visit, oppress, manipulate believers and unbelievers alike. They are called unclean spirits. Jesus gave us power against unclean spirits to cast them out. Are we together? So I just needed to take a pause there to help you know that when it has to do with warfare, a major part of warfare happens in your mind 
but it does not stop there the belief that warfare just ends in the mind is not very accurate you will confront real spirits in your life real spirits with personalities like any other spirit hallelujah so when we stand upon the strength of the finished work of Christ on one hand we are standing upon the victory that has been finished in Christ but then we engage these appropriation systems an encounter with the Son of God makes that life available to you knowledge begins to diffuse that life into your experience are we together yeah faith makes it a reality warfare helps you to maintain that victory because I assure you even Jesus when he walked upon the earth as the son of God the embodiment of that Zoe the logos of God in action Satan did not fold his arms and leave him I overcame hallelujah he won the victory Hallelujah, I overcame. Hallelujah, I overcame. Hallelujah, He won the victory. Hallelujah. I have met many demon spirits in my life as a man of God. I know they exist. Number one, because the Bible says so. Number two, I have not just seen them. They have confronted me. Huh. I'm not talking of a dream. You slept and had a dream and saw whatever it is. And I'm not talking of a movie where you are watching all kinds of things. I have met spirits. They have spoken to me. I have seen them. The memory is etched in my mind forever. I know how they look. I can draw them. You see, the things we have seen... I have seen spirits that oppress people. I have seen spirits that control poverty. I have seen spirits that come in and slip their way through destinies and begin to rewrite rubbish. Some of you are here right now because of the negative influence of those spirits. Casting a negative embargo upon your life that makes things to not be the way God says should be. Even though you have received eternal life, you cannot see the outworkings of eternal life. No favor, no grace, all doors closed, all helpers departed from you. Only evil report gets to the ears of your helpers. Everything good you do, there are spirits that hold them and bury them. And the only thing that proceeds to those who can help you is something negative about you. Calling good evil and calling evil good. Spirits for you. Hallelujah. Let me tell you the truth. Behind most of the tragedies of the saints and the inhabitants in the earth are a myriad of evil spirits walking day and night to make sure they kill everything they can kill. When the Bible says the thief comes to steal, he does not walk alone. Satan is not omnipresent, he's not omniscient, he's not omnipotent. He walks with an array, there is an, an organized satanic cadre. Paul himself gave us an intelligent exegesis that the demonic realm is arranged with intelligence. Satan was once with God and he did not lose the memory of organization when he fell. He has an array of wicked spirits programmed to regions, programmed to offices, programmed to families, programmed to individuals. Every believer in Christ has at least one set of spirits sent to you. At least a set. And a set is not one. If you ever had the voice of one, you are joking. The demon spirits that are on earth and around this domain they far outweigh the inhabitants of the earth such that a legion can manage one body did you hear what i said there is such scarcity of accommodation for demon spirits that a legion should be about six to ten thousand they can make do with one body so if you think it's only two spirits looking for you i want you to think again when you said, God, I will serve you, they had the confession. When you say, God, use me, they had the confession. Are we together? When you prayed and you said, God, let me be the first person to take away shame from my family, they had you. 
it is not God that responds to the prayers of the saints alone. Demons also respond to the prayers. When they see you fasting and praying, they see something rising from your room to the heavens. They are sent. What is going on here? We need to find out. Okay. Ah, he's praying in tongues. We cannot understand. We are not given to understand. But let's study the activities of angels to give us a clue of what he's asking. Because the angels ascend and descend. They excel in strength and they confirm the word. So they may not know what you are saying in the prayer language. But they can see the returns, ascensions and descendings. They see what the angels are bringing. Favor has a, is a spiritual substance. You can see it in the spirit. And know the difference between favor and any other spiritual thing. Physically, they, they are very abstract to the mind. But in the realm of the spirit, you can see favor. There is substance to favor. There is substance to speed. Hmm. Are we together? Oh. Sometimes they see angels coming and there are certain angels the moment demons see they know that there is you are entering a new season in your life go and read your bible you will never see gabriel roaming around the earth but if gabriel shows up he's bringing a message that defines seasons you will never see michael showing up just like that no there are rankings among these spirits So when certain angelic activities begin to happen, the signal is sent across the earth. Because with what is happening in your room, the salvation of 10 million people is connected to it. And the demons will not keep quiet. They will say, you know what? Attack this person as fast as you can. Before the ministry starts. Attack the prayer life. Attack, bring poverty. Make sure the helpers don't reach there. My goodness, I came tonight to disappoint darkness. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I came tonight to establish over your life once and again the victory that is settled in Christ. Do you believe that? This is why we are here. Now listen to me. When we gather in an apostolic and prophetic atmosphere like this, it is important for you to know what God wants to do. Number one, God wants to heal. He wants to heal. The meaning of that is that if you are sick and you are in need of healing, physical, emotional, etc., open up your heart to know that the grace to make that possible is there. And then know how to respond accordingly. So you don't share the grace. Don't come here sick and allow the grace to be shared and you walk back. It is your responsibility to connect with the anointing. What is God doing? Restoration. We live in time. How could God ignore restoration? We live in time. Did you hear what I said? We live in time. Meaning that for the most part, time is always always against many people what is god doing deliverance bringing separations do you know the reason why we hold services every time ministering to people you would think that because you've ministered once if i had my way every day or every week will be a miracle service in, a, in addition to teachings you know why and truly every week is it's just that there are times dedicated for this i'll tell you why number one because at the point you are ministering to people, there are people who have not grown yet in their spiritual life to know that they need to receive. So you don't punish them because of their carelessness. By last month's miracle service, some of you had not seen the need for it. Now you are better prepared to receive. That's why God brings it again. And then there are newer people who are coming to the faith every week and every time. This is why in the package of a miracle service, there are provisions for everyone. If you have gotten to a point where your body has received the revelation of eternal life to live healthy, how about advancement? How about new wine? How about open doors? How about the assignment he gave you? Then how about your loved ones? Hmm. Hallelujah. How about poverty? How about failure? How about the attacks? There are certain attacks around your life now that you do not yet have the level of illumination 
to walk in the experience of victory in. And if God does not create platforms like this for you to come under a prophetic covering to help you while you grow, you may not even leave for that ministry to start. God has called into an apostolic and a prophetic ministry. You have no idea the attacks that are before you. And so God brings you to be shielded. Even if you are Moses, he hides you for a while and allows you to grow. Otherwise, if hell launches its attack and that attack meets with your ignorance, you will not even start the work in the first place. Do you know why some of us are in this state now? And I want you to believe me. There are battles your parents refuse to fight. Listen to me. I'm speaking to you by the Spirit. There are battles that if your parents agree to fight by the Spirit, by now, you would have been 10 years ahead of your contemporaries. But you've not even started fighting your own battles for destiny. You are still managing a backlog of battles and God sent you here to receive help. And there are some of you right now, if you abscond from it carelessly, you are programming trouble for your children. man of God God has brought you here to help you the kind of ministry God has given you you do not yet have the stamina to excel in that ministry and you take an arrogant careless step without help you will be surprised how you will go down the satanic kingdom is an intelligent system it's an intelligent system the victory of the believer is established in experience on account of spiritual intelligence and faith. If all it took was just knowing what Christ has done, then God will not waste his time giving us the anointing. The presence of the anointing is clue as to how stubborn Satan is. Did you hear what I said? The presence of the anointing in spite of the finished work of Christ, the presence of the anointing that God still anoints and re-anoints in ever-increasing measure is proof that there is a stubborn satanic cadre that will not let your destiny go, not without a fight. And while I was praying, I cried to God. I said, Lord, let this miracle service not just be a waste of people's time. Let it be that somebody will come here. Look at the testimony of the lady. Bleeding profusely. You heard the testimony. Look at that kind of demonic thing. Bleeding profusely. And yet, medical science could only go so far. The enemy has done this. You may not be bleeding as a woman. But when, you see, blood stands for life. When life is drained out of you, what is left is death. Life can be represented as your finances, can be represented as any other thing. But the woman with the issue of blood said, I will not wait till he comes to me. Jesus had no business seeing her. She created space for her miracle that day. If you were Jesus' secretary that morning, you would not record as part of his itinerary that he was going to heal a centurion nor a woman with the issue of blood. The major miracles that happened that day came on demand. Anger and hunger combined together. If you were writing as a secretary of Jesus, you probably would not write that today. Part of the itinerary is that a, a woman with the issue of blood, 12 years, all of them were 12, 12 years old. Jarius' daughter, 12 years. The woman's problem, 12 years. And two of them got angry and said today is today like someone needs to be angry whether a word of knowledge comes from me or not one thing i know is i'm not walking out of here the same way i came listen it's going to be a very quick one and as i pray for do you know why many people don't get healed it's not because the power of god is not in a, you know in a place where god is moving is that most of them don't know how to engage as the power of God rests upon you, do what you couldn't do before and begin to celebrate when it's time to announce miracles. Don't sit back there. Don't say, I am far there. No. As the fire of God comes upon you, sometimes I ask the ushers to bring the people out. It's not showmanship. There are levels when God has lifted you. Every point to be proven has been proven. You see, when we ask people to come out here who are under the influence of the anointing, it is because there is a completion to that process of deliverance that God makes. 
Sometimes I wish we had all the time to prophesy one by one. If I mention a case that is your own, don't waste the time of others and just stroll and come out as if you are taking your time. If you are not sure, sit down. Don't allow someone go back without their miracle because you are careless. Are you ready now? Father, I am ready to receive. Pray violently and passionately. Go ahead and pray. Outside, pray. All the overflows, pray. Online, make sure you pray.